Morgan filling in for Jane Huger. We have Wes Clark Jr. in the studio today. Hey, Anna. Hey. And that song is appropriate because that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to sabotage the show. No, is that the plan? No. Well, that's what people think on the YouTube comments. Oh, Jake yeah. Where's Jake? Where's Jake? When's Jake going to come back? Dude, Jake's not here. <laughs> We'd like him to be here. We would like him here. to be here, yeah. It's always like, who, who's that doofus? Get him off. I know. Usually, I'm, know, usually it's, kids. who's that douche? Yeah, who's that who's douche? Who's that douche? <laughs> well, this douche is Wes Clark Jr. That's me. Filling in for Jank. It's going to be a great show. We have great topics for you guys today. Jank will be back tomorrow, though. We will do the show from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, one hour entertainment, one hour political. Same uh, schedule that we've been doing all week. Anyway, this is the entertainment hour, so we're going to start with some entertainment news. And how can we not s start the entertainment hour without Mel Gibson? Really? Yeah. You, can, you want it? I, I right. mean, Mel Gibson, he's top entertainment news of the week. It just keeps getting worse. And um, it turns out that his lawyers have finally done something. Like, we haven't heard anything from Mel Gibson's camp yet, except for a little denial. And now they've come out of the woodworks, and they're saying that uh, Oksana doctored the tapes. Okay. So they're claiming that she edited the tapes. I don't know in what way she edited them. I mean, how do you edit well, she a prob tape? She probably edited them a little bit, but I, I don't think she edited them in the way that she was able to get Mel Gibson to say things he didn't already say. Exactly. He said what he said. They have audio recording of that. And uh, I don't know why uh, the lawyers think that this is a good defense. The only reason why this is relevant and the only reason why that this can work in Mel Gibson's favor is the fact that if the tapes have been tampered with, uh, they're inadmissible in a court of law. So uh, the judge can throw these tapes out and say that they're irrelevant and they don't matter. Mm -hmm. But um, Mel Gibson's camp say that, says that they absolutely have evidence that shows that she edited the tapes. I'm sure she edited the tapes, but it's, right. even if it's not admissible in court, it's not going to save Mel Gibson. Right. No, I, I agree 100%. So uh, I, we'll see what happens, but I love how that's the only way that the attorneys can defend him. Like, oh, no, the tapes, they, they've been edited. That's They're it. just going for what's easy. They're going for what's easy. It's what crossed my mind yesterday. The way I think it's possible that they doctored him was, or edited him, whatever they're saying, was they just, just cut out the effed up things that she was saying. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, but really... You know, I, you know she's on the end of what are you going to do to me? What are you going to do? Tell me! <laughs> and the thing is, and I thought about this when they said that. I was like, well, it's obvious that if she's saying nothing, he's just going off, and it sounds like he's getting more and more pissed over a lack of response. That's kind of weird. But I'm sure she responded. But the thing is, is, yeah, she said something back, but you're a multimillionaire. Just kick her out of your house if she's that annoying, which I'm, I'm not saying she wasn't, but get her ass out there. So you guys are saying that in the original tapes, uh, in the alleged original tapes, she provoked him to go ballistic. Look, who, who knows what she did? I mean, they're kind of two unlikable people. Uh huh. So I can't really root for either one of them. I do know somebody that used to be with her at some point, and he never had a nice word to say about her. So Interesting. Mm. You might get a subpoena soon. No. <laughs> not me. So don't be too uh, it was, it was a long time that. ago. <laughs> All right. Uh, in other Mel Gibson-related news, and I promise this is the last Mel Gibson-related story of the Thank day. You. Um, she claims, Oksana claims, that there is a photo of their baby daughter, Lucia, bruised. And if you remember, in one of the tapes, uh, she got him to admit that she, he hit her twice in mm -hmm. the face. And during that episode, he uh, allegedly hurt the baby as well and bruised her chin. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's another piece of evidence that she plans on showing in court. And let me just... Uh, say why they're in court in the first place. She wants full custody of the baby. So she doesn't want him to have anything to do with the baby. She says that he's a threat and he's violent and dangerous to the child. So that's why they're in court in the first place. Okay. And soon it'll be a, a battle for money. I mean, come on. Yeah, well, that's why she wants full custody. It's right. more money. Of course. It's just step number one. All right. Uh, in other news today, uh, we have the interview of Bristol Palin and Levi Johnston. God, you have no interest in this. <laughs> well, you know why? It's <laughs> he's like. It's, it's 
because I just I keep hearing the same stories over and over and over and over, mm -hmm. and it's like the same kind of celebrity things that have really no bearing on. No, no, I absolutely agree. But it's just Bristol Palin and Levi Johnson. It's just so not interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only thing that was interesting about them as a couple was she got pregnant before marriage, and he took off, and then said shit about her family. Mm -hmm. He said shit about her family, and then now they're back together, and he took all the shit back. Yeah, of course and now he did. Engaged. That's interesting. No, all right, you're right. All let's right. hear. Let's hear what's going on with them. So we have a video of them uh, during their interview with Us Magazine, uh, and she explains how he proposed to her, and she also shows off her ring. We'll get the video in just a minute. Well, the thing is, I, 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 it's, it was brought up yesterday about what's the big deal about these two. But because of all the effed up things he said, and now he's taking them back, I mean, maybe there's a window into how this is happening. I mean, aside from the gossipy side mm -hmm. of it, why he took it back is when he took it back, people were saying, oh, my God, he's been lying the whole time. So maybe now, and I mentioned this yesterday, maybe now there's a chance that there's more truth to what he was saying about oh, the I don't, family's intentions. I don't think he was lying before. I think this is a matter of when he was saying all that stuff, she quit being governor, she was on the out, she was kind of abused by everyone nationwide, and he's like, oh, I'll kick her while she's down. And now he's thinking, well, she could run, and who knows what they offered him as a future payback. You know, it's something mm -hmm. she's not going to want if she ran for president. It could be, you know, Levi, look at this nice job you're going to have in six months. And if he wants the chick back that he wants, Bristol yeah. maybe. Plus, then I got to say, you got to get back with your girl, you got to make some. There's not a lot of women in Alaska, so <laughs> his options are pretty limited. All right, do we have the video? He proposed. Let's see. I came home from work one day, and there was tons of flowers all over my room. And there was the flowers, like rose petals, in the shape of a heart on my bed with um, a box. And then he got down on one knee and asked me to marry him. <laughs> there was no hesitation at all. Is your face getting red? <laughs> I uh, really haven't. <laughs> I wasn't there for a trip in Bristol, um, and now I, now I am, and it feels great. Um, I love them both very much, and you know, as a father, I, I can't explain. You know, all the, I've missed out on a lot of his life, and I can't get that back. I don't know. Probably just seeing him crawl or walk for the first or walking for the first time, his first word. You know, I missed all that, but more importantly, I guess now is I'm I'm here now, and I'm gonna make it right. Whenever we're even just like in a car driving together, it's like, oh, this feels right. Or just watching TV together. Or when we took fi trip fishing the other day, it just feels right to be right a family. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's why I wanted to do the story. That video was just hilarious. Does How it, can I mean, you keep a straight face he's watching thinking, that? He's thinking, all right, I've got to do this video. <laughs> and my buddies have the bong ready five minutes after they wrap because he just doesn't care. So far. Yeah, he didn't say a single thing throughout that entire He just video. looked like he wasn't having a very good time. Yeah. But absolutely. he also, you know, the other thing, Jarvis, he might have, he might have like said all this shit about Sarah Palin thinking, you know, it's going to pay off for me the same way her saying stupid shit pays off for her. And then he, you know, did his photo shoot and stuff. And he's thinking, dude, there's got to be women lined up everywhere. And then he's like, oh, I'm a, I'm a gay sex symbol. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. There's, uh, there's not a lot out there for me except Kathy Griffin. I think maybe, uh, Maybe Bristol's looking a little better now. Have you seen the episode with him and no. Kathy Griffin? What's going on? Like, he just did a, a show with her? or uh, All I know is I read, I read Andrew Sullivan's blog every day, and he's, like, obsessed with him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, that's his audience. So I think he was probably expecting he was going to have a blast out in L.A., and he's, like, probably hanging out with a bunch of dudes going, where are the ladies? Where's the money? Mm -hmm. what, what is this? And so then he's got to go back to Alaska. He took the wrong route with, play, with Playgirl. So... Okay, what's the real route to become a male sex symbol? Which Dude, magazines knows? do you do? GQ, uh, Men's Health. I mean, I don't know how does this work. I, I, think, think, I think you have to star as a doctor in a TV show first, and then all that other stuff follows from it. It's a real challenge for a, a male to be viewed as a male sex symbol. It's not as easy as it is for women. Like we've mentioned this a million times on the show. Uh, it's so challenging and difficult for a man to try to be sexy. He can't try to purposefully be sexy. Yeah, because you look ridiculous. But, but if he does some sort of acting gig, then I think that's a surefire way. I don't think he's going to do a lot of acting gigs. I don't think so time. either. So for Levi, look, I think Levi Johnston is sexy. I think he's a good looking guy, but then he talks and I change my mind. But um, he Look, he doesn't seem like a bad guy. He seems like any other kid his age from Alaska. Yeah. He should have got that reality show we were talking about, man. Who wants Levi's jeans? Like some, all these girls are after him. <laughs> 
Come on. Really? Reality shows will get you that. It, it, it'll get you at least the 18 year old girl crowd. At least no, they'll if want you it. do something fully ridiculous and totally embarrass yourself on the reality show, yeah. But if, if you're going to try and be like, come across as a normal person, nobody wants to watch that. It's boring. If it's on VH1 or MTV, yeah, maybe. It might work out. But I'm maybe. sure he tried that. I'm sure he went down that route. It didn't work. It didn't work out. All right, this next story is for you, JR, because you are a texting machine. So uh, I read this study and I immediately thought of you, and I want you to pay close attention. So uh, there was a poll done by sellmymobile.com, and what the poll indicated uh, was that about 20% of Britons uh, send the wrong sext to the wrong person. So they're sexting something, they're sending a really racy photo, and they think they're sending it to a significant other or a fling, and then they accidentally send it to their mother or their father. Now, these numbers actually rise to 43% when you're uh, specifically talking about those who are 25 years and younger. Okay, so 43% of Britons, uh, 25 years old or younger, have accidentally send, sent a sext to the wrong person. Ugh. So, JR, how many times have you sexted to the wrong person accidentally? I don't sext. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Because, I mean, I'm, I've, I've moved ahead as far as whole, like I don't talk on the phone anymore. I'm just like most people, I think. I mean, that's just my circle. Where all I do is, I don't even like emailing. I'll, I'll, all you do is text. I text. And then um, emails just take too long. I don't know. It kind of defeats the purpose of how fast things are supposed to be moving. But I, I knew some people that have done it. He told a horrible story, a friend of mine. He, he did the typical penis shot and was sending it to this oh. girl. And he accidentally, he sent it to his female boss. No! Oh, disaster! And so you realize it as soon as it happens. So he's like, oh, so you have to send like some kind of saving face text. Like, I didn't, what are you going to say? I meant to send that to a girl? Well, fine, but then now I know what type of person you are not at work. You know, it's just how it comes out to him. I forget what he did, but she rolled back laughing like, ah. You know, she's basically clowning on him. So at least he had a cool enough boss that she understood that. But what I have done is I may be talking shit about somebody. Mm -hmm. And because I'm talking about them, my brain is there. Their name is on my brain. So I'll just go to scroll to their name on accident. I've almost done that really? three times. I haven't done it. And it's not bad. It's just like talking about what they did. And I'm like, oh, yeah, and this yeah, it's just, bastard, it's just talking this about behind their back. Yeah, it's just, not bad. No one really, <laughs> no one really disagrees with people doing that. No, but it's no, it's no like just normal shit talking. That I will say to my friends to their face. They know that. But if somebody's asking, "Oh, so what happened in Mexico?" I was like, "Oh, this bastard. You never know what he did." And I'll say that because he knows he did it. You know, yeah. what I mean, so it's not like I'm saying anything to ruin him or anything like that. But I was like, right before you send it, you go, "Oh, like your fingers right over the button," and it happens when you're drinking more. Oh, absolutely. These things happen when it's laid out, laid out at night. So I've gotten some, some, uh, some texts from people. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing really bad, but just <laughs> <laughs> Texting while drunk is always a recipe for disaster. But I had uh, a texting mistake that had to do with jank ones. And I was uh, texting my boyfriend, and I was texting him, nothing racy or sexy, but my thoughts on something that happened during the day at work. So, uh, and it wasn't necessarily something terrible, but it was What me. was it? I mean, Jake I already remember. knows about it, obviously. You sent no, it no, no. He already knows about it. But I think it was something like, uh, I don't even remember. It was, it was me recounting the day and just talking about uh, what my thoughts were on the way I did the show, right? And it was something that, I, that didn't really matter whether or not Jenk saw it. Like, it wouldn't make him angry with me or mm -hmm. upset with me. But I'd rather have him not see that, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I sent it to him, and it same exact thing happened. I sent the text to Jenk, and immediately I'm like, shit, what did I just do? He's going to read this, and he's going to... And I always think that Jenk is going to blow up when, in reality, he doesn't get mad at anything, right? So, like, he's going to get mad. He's going to get mad, he's going to read this, and he's, he's going to say, oh, so that's how you really feel, right? Or something like that. But um, the, the next day, I come into the studio, and I'm all nervous, and I'm thinking he's going to mention it. And he doesn't mention it until halfway through the show. He's like, oh, by the way, I think you accidentally sent me a message like, that you meant to send to Ladis. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I did that, I did that. But I, now, every time I do send a racy text message to my boyfriend, I always like, make sure that it's not to Jenk. Because like, can you imagine that? You you like, hey, baby, often, what are you wearing? <laughs> how often does your boyfriend get the messages? The sexy Are you messages? a weekly sexy message sender, daily? Once in a while. No, not daily. I don't have a, a regular schedule, but sometimes when I'm feeling feisty. Like right. if I've had too much caffeine, <laughs> I'll send him something, you know, 
scintillating. <laughs> no, I've never, uh, never done. I've accidentally called people plenty of times because I never turn the phone off. But that's mm -hmm. a little different. Were you too old school to text? Dude, I'll text, but it's like I like talking to people on the phone. I like to hear their voices. I only talk to like girls, like girls that I'll be interested in. Like I, I, I still do that. But if it's anybody else, only girls like, you're interested in. Yeah, like it. if I'm dating somebody or if I just met her, I won't text her. I won't do all that stuff. I think you got to talk to them. And I, I prefer you can, to. You can text them once you get to know them, and then the real you comes out, which is I don't talk to people. <laughs> well, no, but if if I'm still dating her, I'll still talk to her on the phone. But like yeah. if you're just a friend, yeah, I'll just send you some texts. I don't, I don't have time to talk for 45 minutes to an hour. It's just, I mean, come on. Who has no, time? no, you're true. That's true. I don't know. And maybe it's bad, but I, 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 I'm willing to admit it. Oh, I hate when technology fails, though. I, there have been so many times when I've accidentally done a reply all when I didn't mean to, and I, and I say something that I wish I hadn't said. I never do the reply all, ever, never. Oh, really? Never. I reply all a lot. I think people hate that, right? Yeah, they do. <laughs> people dislike that. Well, because but, then everybody's, everybody's being subjected to your emails. I know, I know, but it depends. It depends on what it is. Like, if it's work-related and it's just us five people that work here, then I don't give a crap. Like, you guys are going to you guys are gonna read what I have to say. What? What are you going to do? <laughs> no, no, kidding. listen. I wanted, I wanted to know that Cenk had that baby and what the baby's name was. <laughs> what I necessarily didn't want to know was the response from the hundreds of people that he emailed about it that he's copied to. And I'm like, oh, it's another two seconds of my life gone. Jake's child and people I just don't know. Definitely. You can get the first one. Yeah. But if, you resp if I get something and I have something I want to say to the person who sent it, Air Boss doesn't want to hear what I have to say. At you, have, all. you have to, you have to realize Nobody. that. I love you, Jr., but I don't want to hear what you have yeah, to say. Yeah, especially if, especially <laughs> half the time the line is, oh, that's great. Okay, I know you probably think that, but you have to send that to me. It's not my baby. I, you know, I didn't send the original one. So if it's something that means something to everybody, cool. But you know, if it means something just to the person that sent it, just take note, please. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Point taken. Well, as long as we're talking about this, I'd also like the people to stop telling me to like things or try things on Facebook. Because I just, I don't care. I don't care what you like. I don't care what fucking game you want to play with me. I'm not going to play fucking Mafia Wars with you. Fuck off. I've got, like, shit to do. You know? It's so true. Or Farmville? Farmville is another I don't another even know thing. what the fuck Farmville. I, I just, Mafia Wars is the first one I kept getting notified on, and I'm just like, dude, mm -hmm. buy a real gaming system. What are you doing Facebook? You want me to play games on Facebook? Mm -hmm. No. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we have a story of a woman with two uteruses. We'll be back on The Young Turks. Casparian and Wes Clark Jr. filling in for Jank. What's up, Wes? Uh, you know, just hanging out here at the Young Turks. That's it. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. A little bit of this and that. All right. Uh, during the break, Wes asked if we could talk about the legalization of marijuana, and yeah. I think that's a great topic. So. Well, just because Diane Feinstein this week came out against it. She did come out against it. And said to vote against it as a Democrat. And I got to say, I don't think there's any more unjust law in our country than jailing people for smoking marijuana. Absolutely, especially considering the fact that it costs a great deal of money to keep inmates uh, well, it, in jail. It costs $60,000 a year to keep an inmate in jail. Right, and when you have nonviolent uh, drug offenders in jail, basically using up these resources, it just doesn't make any sense. Let's, look, let's, just, let's just go to the basic hypocrisy in our system. Okay. Uh, John Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, Bill Clinton, G.W. Bush and Barack Obama have all smoked marijuana. Every single one of them has. And the only difference between them and the millions of people sitting in jail right now rotting and eating up tax dollars and losing their entire lives is they got caught doing it in front of a cop. Mm -hmm. That's the only difference. And it's just, it's, it's unbelievable that we have all these people locked up for a nonviolent offense in this country. And have you smoked pop before, Anna? 
Um, I'm, that's not something that I would talk about on the show. JR, <laughs> have you ever smoked it? No? Mm -mm. Jesus? <laughs> Is that a yes? Okay, yeah. No, I have two. And I got to say, comparing, comparing alcohol and pot together, I got to say, they, they've got the wrong one being illegal. Mm -hmm. I mean, the number of lives I've seen absolutely destroyed by alcohol, whether it's violence, car crashes, just crazy behavior, mm -hmm. pales in comparison to pot. Who's ever died of a marijuana overdose? So what is Dianne Feinstein's argument against legalizing marijuana? You know, let, let me tell you what it all comes back to. It all comes back to racism in the early part of this century where basically people said, okay, we got the liquor makers here mm -hmm. and the blacks, they're smoking grass and we're not making money off that. It's going to make the white women sleep with them. And by the way, that was one of the reasons it was made illegal uh -huh. is they passed the law and boom, that's it. So for years, it's saying, oh, it's this dark, evil thing. It's going to make you twisted. What it's going to make you do is maybe look at life differently as you're sitting on the couch. Mm -hmm. It's not going to make you get in a fight. It's not going to make you abuse your family. It's not going to make you jump in the car and, like, drive into a brick wall. I mean, it's just, it's, it, it's something that's so not dangerous. Mm -hmm. And that we've got millions of people locked up when the past few presidents of the United States have admitted they've smoked it. It's, it's to me, just the most hypocritical thing our government's done out of many mm -hmm. hypocritical things. And for, for Feinstein to go, oh, no, I think it should keep being illegal. Well, the thing is, it's not illegal in California. It's not illegal in California if you have the money and a connection to a doctor who can write you a prescription. But just the same way abortion was never really illegal for wealthy people. The people who are punished in this are people who don't have money. Because if the police were driving around upper income neighborhoods and upper middle class neighborhoods arresting anybody and searching anyone they could find that smelled like marijuana, you'd have just as many white people in jail as black people and brown people. And it's absolute BS and it's criminal. And we should all wake up and go out and vote in November and make it legal. I really think that's what's going to happen. I believe that whether or not Dianne Feinstein wants to c convince people to uh, criminalize marijuana and, you know, not legalize it, people are going to go to the polls and most people know that marijuana is not a terrible drug and it's not nearly as bad as alcohol is. I think they're going to go... It's not even close to as bad yeah, as alcohol. Exactly. And we're, we're, we're glorifying alcohol on a daily basis on every major network, on every airwave. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going and getting just hammered. Right. You lose so much more control drinking alcohol than you would ever do from smoking a joint. It just, it blows my mind that one is considered illegal and the other is, you know, hey, fine, get as drunk as you want. Being drunk will make you cool. Right. You, you realize as you get older, there's really nothing less cool than being drunk. I mean, look, when you're in your 20s, dude, it's cool when you're drunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see people in their 40s and 50s, you're like, Seriously. Yeah. Get no, over yourself. No, you're absolutely right about that. Like, as someone who's in her 20s, when you go to a bar and you see someone who's middle-aged just completely wasted off their butt. Not it, cool. Not, not attractive. Cool. Exactly. No, I agree with you 100% on that. All right. Uh, we have a Tea Party spokesperson who um, said a lot of controversial things on Wolf Blitzer's show on CNN. And I definitely want to get to this story. Uh, Mark Williams, he's a spokesperson for the Tea Party Express. Uh, was debating with Roland Martin, and they were talking about whether or not the Tea Party is uh, racist. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have a video for you guys, and it perfectly uh, displays the core of the argument that they had. So why don't we go to the video? Um, I think it's video number three. I'm not going to uh, preface every sentence I say for the rest of my life. By the way, we're not racist. By the way, I don't beat my wife. We are what we are, and when these vile people show up, they find out that we're, we're not a happy home. But yeah, as I'm, long I'm as they keep turning on that. the TV and listening to people like you, Roland, saying that no, that's where I, they'll find a happy actually, home, they're going to keep showing Mark, up. You're not going to lie on CNN. I never said that. And I have said... That's what you're saying right now no, 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 this Mark, entire Mark, interview. Mark, 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 allow me to finish. I have said consistently, the Tea Party people have an absolute right to assemble, to protest. But what I have said, there's no right in that movement for racists. And what 
I've said is you should come out and oh. say you're not welcome here. And your Races own have their own movement. It's called the gotcha. NAACP. Oh, right that's now. nonsense. But they've done right. more. They bought no more. Bunch old racism. fossils you looking even, to make okay, a buck off nice skin mark. color. That's nice, Mark. Not, but they've done more to combat racism than you have ever had. All so right. you can rip them all you want to, but they have a long history of fighting for the rights of all Americans, not just African Americans. Okay, so of course he targets the NWACP. Uh, you keep wanting to say NWA. Why, why is that? I don't know. He keeps targeting an organization that wants to uh, help the advancement of colored people. That's something that he obviously is not in favor for, and he obviously doesn't like that organization, which, uh, in my opinion, backs up Roland Martin's uh, argument that the Tea Party is racist. I mean, come but on. But in the Tea Partier's mind, they're not. I, I, That's the thing. They and for them, they're like, "Oh, you have an association of colored people. Where you're, you're grouped around the idea of race." Well, yeah, dude, because there was white supremacy in the country for like 500 years. Absolutely. And that was that only went away like when I was a kid. I mean, it's it's more recent than these people understand. No, exactly. And I, look, I I look at that man and I just see pure guilt. Like he knows he's guilty, and it's like, okay, I'm in the middle of this argument. How can I make myself? Uh, how can I get myself out of this, right? How can I discredit what this guy is saying? Oh, let me discredit the NAACP. Let me, look, mm -hmm. ma let me make them look like the bad guys. Now, why did he mention the NAACP in that uh, debate? The reason why he did that is because uh, the organization just approved a resolution uh, that condemns what it calls racist elements within the Tea Party. I think it's interesting that they had to approve a resolu resolution for that. Why do you have to approve a resolution to condemn something? But anyway, in, in any well, case... Well, because as an... You can do it as an individual, but as an organization, you've got to vote on it. Okay, so they had to vote on it, and they all agree that uh, they need to condemn the Tea Party for their racist elements. So that's the reason why um, this Mark Williams guy is all just Now, do we, have, do we have any other video from Mark Williams or maybe some of these non-racists? Uh, we don't have another video of Mark Williams. Uh, oh, we do. Okay, so I thought we did. We do, we do. Uh, so we have Mark Williams, and uh, he's talking about how the NAACP uh, makes more money uh, than... Wait, and this, is, and this is before... This is after the CNN. Oh, this is after the CNN. Yes, okay. this is after the CNN. He talks about how uh, the NAACP makes more money than slave owners did back in the so day. So wait, so he's digging deeper. He's, he's, he's digging, digging deeper. deeper. Okay. He's not apologizing. Could he's we, digging uh, deeper. I don't recall the NAACP speaking out when George Bush was portrayed as Curious George or as the Joker. I don't recall the NAACP ever standing up and saying that we needed to, you know, civilize discourse when, when Republicans were in the White House. We are dealing with people who are professional race baiters who make a very good living off of this kind of thing. They make more money off of race than any slave trader ever. It's time groups like the NAACP went to the trash heap of history where they belong with all the other vile, racist groups that, that emerged in our history. This man is such a joke. He's such a joke. Right, I gotta say, first it's of all, slave traders made a hell of a lot of money. That's how they had all those nice antebellum mansions in the South. This country was basically built on slavery, Absolutely. more or less. Mm -hmm. I mean, they made a fortune. Right. And what I love about him is that he's asking, where was the NAACP when everyone was calling George Bush Curious George? They didn't call him Curious George because of his race or because of his nationality. It was nationality. his ears it and was, his name, stupid. Right. It, it, was, it was the fact that he was also an idiot. So, uh, yeah, people made fun of him because of his uh, dumb comments during speeches, because of his policies. It had nothing to do with his race. So why would the NAACP come out and defend George Bush for when people are calling him Curious George. It just doesn't make any sense. But anyway, this guy is crazy. And it, it's funny because you have a spokesperson who's supposed to go around and uh, clear the name of the Tea Partiers and make the Tea Partiers seem as though they're not racist, but he's doing the exact opposite. He's going around making the Tea Party look even more racist. Oh, absolutely. But it's also, look, the NAACP, what it exists for, I mean, you had the legal Jim Crow laws and everything like that. And what a lot of these Tea Partiers are angry about is all the lawsuits and everything else in the past 30 or 40 years because racism just isn't just a matter of what's the law. It's the system and the networks. It's why people had to sue to get into country clubs and, and dinner clubs and everything else because that's where all the deals are made and that's how business works. It's through connections with people. And if you're excluded from all the informal stuff, you're never going to get the business connections that you need to like, you know, make something.
Right. That's why they exist. That's why they go and sue these places. Right. Exactly. And you know, why do people think that the Tea Parties, Tea Partiers, are racist? Right. This is not something that came out of nowhere. In fact, we have a video, video number six, that explains exactly why the Tea Party is perceived as a racist organization. He's too black to be president. I'm a proud racist. I'm white. Afro-Leninism coming to you on a silver platter. For us, Hussein Obama. We are losing our country. We think the Muslims are moving in and taking over. We're sending back to Kenya. You ready for a tea party? Yeah! Why do you hate that? It's a filthy, stinking animal. Really? We can fight Al-Qaeda. We can't kill Obama. Yeah. I'm proud to be a racist. Nothing racial. And if you look at my wife, it's not the color of his skin that troubles me. All right. I mean, that video speaks for itself. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to say every Tea Party is like that, but there's definitely that element within it. Right, and you can't have, you, you can't, have a spokesperson go on a major network and say, no, what are you talking about? Racism? What racist elements? What are you talking about? What, the well, and then attack the NAACP and say they've made more money than slave owners. Yeah, I mean, exactly. could, you, could you have picked a worse thing to say? I mean, is it possible? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, so you would think that uh, a black bishop would l look at Mark Williams' comments and condemn him for it, right? But no, we have a conservative... A uh, black bishop who says that the NAACP should be ashamed, and uh, he is basically defending Mark Williams. So let's go to that video. It's video number five. Well, according to Think Progress, a former Tea Party Express chairman, uh, Mark Williams, called President Obama, quote, an Indonesian Muslim turned welfare thug and a racist in chief. He also called the Muslim god Allah, quote, a terrorist monkey god. Are you comfortable with that? Well, first of all, nobody speaks for me. And uh, if you ask me, am I comfortable with everything that Al Sharpton said or Jesse Jackson said or any black conservative said, I, you'd probably find things I'd say, no, nah, that, that doesn't represent me. Uh, I'm a Republican. I don't agree with everything Michael Steele says. Uh, so look, we understand that the Tea Party is a broad movement and people will sometimes say things that some of us won't disagree with, uh, will disagree with. But the idea that the Tea Party movement is racist or that it has quote unquote racist elements that need to be denounced is a nonsensical statement and I would turn that on the NAACP and say why don't you denounce the racist elements within certain parts of the black community because in my view it is just as insidious. <laughs> JR I know that you had strong opinions on this uh, so share please. Well I, I, from that particular guy there's always and it, it was it also led from the video of people from the uh, from the Tea Party video where he says look I have a black wife I can't be racist, right? Even though I just said something that was ridiculous and, and was completely based in race. So as long as you have a black person to co-sign, then you ha you're validated all of a sudden. And that's, that's the mind of a racist a lot of times. Oh, I, I have like three black friends. None of them beat me up yet. So, I mean, <laughs> what I'm telling you right now is they're good guys, and I don't think all black people are bad. Those three guys that I met, they're okay. Look, I have black friends, so I can say whatever I want. I, I've, I've, I have this immunity. But so this guy, mm -hmm. and there's a few of them, um, you know, you always need validation. You got guys like Mark Williams that are saying ridiculous things and double downs and, and adds to his stupidity. So you need someone to say, well, check this out. This black guy is vouching for me. This black guy is vouching for me. And so you need, you need this guy. So in order to co-sign, you got to get paid. This guy doesn't mean, it. This doesn't mean anything he's saying. He, he, he's talking in a complete circle. He contradicted himself within 35 seconds of his first sentence. Right. So, I, look, Mark Williams doesn't speak for me. But you speak for Mark Williams. So, I mean, somebody's a puppet here. And you, you pointed out right there in front of you. So, the, the guys like this, it, it's, it's just, it turns into an annoying factor. You, they play this card. Oh, I have a black friend card. It's, it, it, should be, it should be relevant by now. Right. You, you can have a guy who's never met a black person. It doesn't mean he's a racist. It, it's a matter about what you say and what you believe. It has nothing to do with who you know and who's t speaking up for you. Who cares? He's a black guy. He hates himself. Fine. Okay. Good. 
All right, why don't we take a break? When we come back, uh, I have some news on financial reform, and I also have a story on Sarah Palin's Mama Grizzlies ad. Uh, we'll be back on The Young Turks. I'm expressing with my full capabilities, and now I'm living in correctional facilities. Cause some don't agree with how I do this. I get straight and meditate like a Buddhist. I'm dropping flavor, my behavior is hereditary. But my technique is very necessary. Blame it on Ice Cube. Welcome back to the Young Turks, Anna Kasparian and Wes Clark Jr. Um, today was uh, a big day for financial reform. Supposedly. Right, exactly. Uh, the Congress passed the Wall Street reform package. Uh, it was a 60 to 39 vote. Only three Republicans supported the bill, even though uh, Obama has compromised and has catered to the Republicans. Only three voted in favor of this he, financial he, reform. The thing is, he, he didn't compromise and cater to the Republicans. He com compromised and catered to the financial industry. Yes, he did. Which is of why, course. you know. Everyone says, ah, the most far-reaching financial reforms in history since the Great Depression. They didn't do anything to fix the problem. Right. They, so, the, the bill does nothing to break up the big banks. Nothing. Um, so, uh, look, if Jenk were here, he would go on a long rant about it. I'm not going to go on a long rant I went on a long rant it. about it the other day. It, right. doesn't do, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't protect us from it happening again. It doesn't fix the economy. And it's not going to bring manufacturing back to this country. So as long as we're happy with about two or 3,000 people in the country making hundreds of millions of dollars a year while everyone else is screwed, hey, you know, great. The bill does some things, though. It doesn't, it, it doesn't solve the major problem, which is the big banks, as I mentioned. But it does some things. It creates a consumer financial entity, uh, brings reform uh, to derivatives trading. It does some things. It's better than nothing. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I don't know. I guess it's better than nothing. Not much. Bans deceptive mortgage lending, which is one of the things that made our economy crash in the first place. Okay, have you ever gotten mortgage lender like stuff mailed to you, and it always no. looks like it's an official government document or something else? Mm -hmm. I've never, no, I've never if, received. Once it. you get a house, you're gonna like. We were getting ten and fifteen mailings a week, and it's like everything looks like an official government document, and it's not. It's just somebody trying to like rip you off mm -hmm. on a mortgage, but that's not the base of the problem. Mm -hmm. It's not going to fix the problem. Unless you bring manufacturing back to this country, we're hosed. And you can't bring it back when people can make 15 and 20 points on their money by investing in financial schemes, which are just pyramids. Mm -hmm. So there's my two cents. All right. Um, Bloomberg also just did a story about our housing market that I found really interesting because a lot of people say that our housing crisis has peaked and it's not going to get any worse than this. Well, it turns out that uh, 2010 was terrible in terms of home seizures, about uh, a rise in 38, a 38% 38 rise in home seizures in 2010 alone. And um, this study was done by Realty Track Inc. And they found some crazy numbers. For instance, Nevada had the highest foreclosure rate for the first half of this year. One in 17 homes uh, received filing for the first half of this year. Just for the first half of this year? Just for the first half in this year. One in 17 homes. That is so depressing and so sad to hear. So, you know, people are always debating as to whether or not things are going to get worse. And from what you read, yeah, things are going to get worse. Things can always get worse. But this also, this shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. I mean, you basically, the government, after they did the financial reforms and you had your first round of foreclosures, they came up with, you know, a tax incentive to buy a house. Mm -hmm. So you get a tax holiday on buying a house beginning, I think, October last year up until, I think, May of this year. And then that's why you heard all the news like last winter, oh, the housing economy is getting better. Yeah, because you gave people a tax credit. You incentivized them to buy houses. Mm -hmm. As soon as that credit ran out, which I think was May, I'm not sure, suddenly, oh, wait, people stopped buying houses. Well, yeah, because you're not incentivizing anymore, and the economy keeps crashing, and they can't afford the houses they're in. So, yeah, it's going to, they get seized. Yeah, I don't... It, this is such depressing news, and you no, it's, don't. It's a bummer. And, and you don't hear about ways that politicians are trying to solve it. I, I just po listen. Po like, look, I, I wouldn't agree with my friend who's running for governor mm -hmm. in Colorado on most issues, 
But if you work in business outside of just being a peon for a while, and I've been a peon and I've gotten to see kind of a lot of different sides of it, mm -hmm. you can't do this stuff without building an economy and without building up jobs. I mean, everything else, it's going to be keep being bad news because we basically shipped our economy off to China and Mexico. Right. And there's not that much left here. I mean, now they've shipped out, they're shipping out engineering jobs and everything else, and all the white collar jobs they thought would be here forever. So it's going to get worse. So you're saying that one way to solve this is to um, make sure that businesses don't outsource their jobs, make sure that yeah. incentivize them keeping jobs here in the United States. Absolutely. Anything right. you can to keep those jobs here. Like, you know, I think I told you this windmill company I was working for for a couple of years, they were going to build a big factory mm -hmm. here in the States because they thought as part of the climate provisions that the administration would say, you have to have American manufactured, manufactured, not just, you know, shipped in, American manufactured components, you know, if you're going to be eligible for all these tax programs. And then they backed off and they're like, oh, well, if we did that, the Europeans could accuse us of, you know, you, you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be part of the W, it wouldn't fit with WTO standards, whatever. It's like, dude, do you think China really cares about what the WTO thinks? Right. Do you think anybody competing with us cares? They don't care. They're out to make a buck on us. And to, to go, oh, we're just going to do what the WTO says. First of all, none of the American companies have our interests at heart at all. Of course not. Their interest not. is to maximize profit for their shareholders, period. Nothing else. So any corporation you're dealing with, if, if that CEO is like, hey, how would you like to bring home an extra bonus of like $4 million? We just got to ship off these 100 jobs in the state that you never even visited that we have a facility in. He's like, yeah, no problem. He doesn't know those people. Mm -hmm. He's probably only been in the company two or three years. He didn't build the company. They don't have any ownership on it. So they just ship it off. They don't care. You know, and in terms of the Bloomberg article that I just mentioned, the main reason why the uh, housing market continues to get worse is because of the fact that people don't have jobs. People don't have yeah. the money to pay their mortgages. Regardless of how much their mortgage costs, they just cannot find work. And as you mentioned, the reason why they can't find work is because we're shipping all of our work out to other countries. Yeah, well, you know, that's the way it is. Until somebody does something about it, that's the way it's going to continue to be. People can hope all they want, but, Pretty soon, you know. TYT is going to hire someone in China to do my job. All of a sudden, you're going to see a Chinese Anna Kasparian reporting the news. And we're going to pay her like $10 an hour. Wait, that's I what I thought you were paid. already getting paid $10 an hour. <laughs> no, I get, I, I get paid a little more than about ten fifty, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, I want to get to the Sarah Palin story because get I to love it. it. You have... Um, just barely enough time. I do, I do. A uh, couple days ago, last week, we talked about Sarah Palin's new ad. It's a 90-second ad for Sarah Pack called Mama Grizzlies. And I went off on it because in her ad, she's always targeting women. And she's always making herself out to be like this feminist and this woman who's out there for female empowerment. And I hate that because she uses that disguise when in reality she's not about empowering women. She's about taking uh, women's rights away. But um, I was wondering where, how well do, do her ads do? Like, who sees her ads? Uh, does her core base uh, see this ad? Do they like the ad? Who, I actually know the answers to these questions. You know these answers. Is it because you were? 30, 30, I think 33,000 of her Facebook fans went and actually saw the YouTube ad. Right. And of the YouTube, what, I think she got like a million or two million hits, two thirds of them were negative. Right, comments. exactly. Uh, Ari Melber wrote a great piece for The Nation called New Data Show Sarah Palin as Paper Grizzly. And what that means is Sarah Palin might look like she's big on paper, but in reality, the only people who pay attention to her are media, a.k.a. us, <laughs> and people who really don't like her, people who want to make fun of her. So her actual base n doesn't really watch those ads and get excited about it. In fact, they don't even really notice it or care about it. Mm -hmm. The only people who saw that Mama Grizzlies ad was us, people who want to well, talk yeah, crap. Well, yeah, because you're showing it all right. the time. You're linking to it on everything. You're the only people linking to it. We are the only people linking to it. So we're actually doing Sarah a favor you by are. talking about her, her right now. You get her to come on the show. Right. So the reason why I wanted to bring this up right now is because me getting upset and angry Can you imagine was... her coming on the show? Can you even imagine? I can't imagine. I don't, I don't know what I would say to her. I wonder if... Um, I would well, I don't know what you'd be allowed to say to her. You'd probably have to sign something that would, you know, not permit any number of questions. I don't think TYT would ever sign something like that. I'm being realistic because Jank is not the type of guy who would be into that. Like, God, it would be funny as hell, though, to have her. 
Yeah, Jenk would totally rip into her. It'd be great. But, um, yeah, I, I pretty much got upset over nothing because I'm the only one who saw that ad. Yeah, to, listen, <laughs> listen, I gotta say to Progressive Everett, don't worry about Sarah, Sarah Palin. She's not going to get a nomination for Jack Ola. No, she's not going to get a nomination. That's right. But I think I got upset because in my crazy little mind, I thought, oh, my God, she's convincing women to support her. She's and not convincing women, and you're not crazy. Exactly. No one, no one is supporting her. No one's buying this Sarah Pack ad. She continues to be a joke, and she will be a joke uh, till the end of time. Did it make you feel better? See, all that it bad news, and then there's a little bit of good news. A little end. bit of good news for Anna Kasparian. It made me feel good. So, uh, and uh, let me squeeze in one more story. It'll be really fast. Uh, the ACLU is demanding that Harrisburg Mayor Linda Thompson stops praying when she starts her staff meetings. Okay, so she's a mayor in Pennsylvania. Uh, she opens up her uh, staff meetings with a prayer, and the ACLU is upset about it because one of her staff members anonymously went to the ACLU and complained about it. So um, at first I was like, who cares? If she wants yeah, to Yeah, I'm of that. Who cares? Let her pray. Who yeah, cares? let What's her pray. Deal? But at the same time, I don't have a problem with her praying. At the same time, I have a problem with one of her staff members feeling uncomfortable and not but feeling that, like that she doesn't mean the staff member. That, the staff member may just not like her. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, I'm going to use this to get her, and goes and makes a phone call. It doesn't mean they're, I mean, who gets that uncomfortable? Unless her prayers are like, and I hope, and the guy goes, Bob, and I hope Bob is hit by lightning today. <laughs> like, yeah, that would be a bad prayer, but. That would be a bad prayer. You know, prayer. I doubt it. She's probably just like, oh, let's go get to work, Jesus. You know, how hard is that? It would how be weird, though. It would be weird if, let's say, I was new to TYT, and I walked into work one day, and I, you guys started the show with a prayer. Yeah, it would be weird, because it's a really anti-religious show. So for us <laughs> to do that, we'd have to be like, let's you know. just let, okay, But let's just say it's not an anti-religious show, and that happens. I walk in. It's my very first day, and everyone's praying. I'm going to be too intimidated to say this makes me feel uncomfortable, because I'm a new person. Like, that's something that's going to make me feel uncomfortable, but I'm going to have to deal with it, because I'm new at this place, and I don't want to raise any objections to anything. Anyway, it's been great. We got to go. The show's over. But uh, Jenk will be back tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and thank you for coming in, Wes. Hey, it's been fun. It's always good to see you guys. All right. We'll be back tomorrow on The Young Turks.